there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to be trying to fix up this Philips Screenio. This is a projector but it's an interesting one because you have it close to the wall and it's like a short throw. It shines upwards onto the wall so you haven't got to have it across the room. Bought it from eBay as 40, there's no power and when you turn it on nothing happens. Occasionally you get a red light but then when you try to press a button it just goes off again. I've tried resetting it, that hasn't made any difference. So let me unpack it and show you it not working. So here it is and it is a lovely looking thing. I mean if you put that down you have extra ports, a load of inputs in the back here. There's damage here. I can see that the plastic's missing from the top bit here. It should be like that. And also when I move it around, I can hear a bit of rattling inside, but nothing's happening. When I turn it on here, the uh, looks like the lens is here shining upwards. Uh, when I hold that down for 10 seconds, it still doesn't do anything. It's just got no power at all. Occasionally you have a red light that can't oh, get. There's the red light there now, but look, if I press a few buttons, so if I was to press home, press a few other buttons, you'll now see that the red light is now gone and yet there's still nothing coming out of that lens there. So let's take it apart and see if it becomes obvious what's wrong with it. Now this might bring a few new members to my channel. I've never looked at a projector before, so it's going to be similar to having a go yourself if you've never looked at one. So let's see, I might get lucky, it might be something obvious, who knows, let's take it apart and find out. So here we have it, and it is a real beast. I would like to get this working. It'd be ideal for movie nights. I don't think I would use it all the time, but for movie nights it would be good. And it can go from 50 inches to 100 inches, and you've only got to have it not very far away from the wall at all. So it'd be really interesting to see how that works. So now, how am I going to take this apart? Let's see if there's any screws underneath these things. Yes, there is. There's screws underneath here. So I'll start there and we'll see what comes off and then we'll uh, take it further. So while I'm undoing them, let's give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive, which are the group of patrons that support at the top level. So this month, that is Saturnine Cinema, Operational 117, KitDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Stephen Kilgore, Chris Seal, the My Mate Vince Fan Club, Woo! Dorian from Hoover Lux Restorations, and Doctor Restoration. Those two fit nicely together. So yeah, massive thanks to uh, all the My Mate Vince Massive. and all the other Patreons. And this is a model number HDP1690. Now obviously I'm unplugged from the uh, power at the moment. Now is anything gonna come out? Good thing about this is apparently the sound's good. It's got all speakers on the side and also the front as well. So it's a kind of all-in-one unit. Oh, here we go, it's coming. Okay. Right, well there's a ribbon cable just flapping in the wind here. Maybe that's just come out just now though. Unless of course it was dropped and that came out. Look, can you see here? It's highly unlikely, but remember there is damage on the side of this and that ribbon cable here is just flapping around, but that's probably just come out now as I've just pulled it up. But just in case it is as simple as a loose ribbon cable, I am gonna plug that back in. Right, red light. Now press on. Red light's still on. Yeah, there's no, uh, there's no light coming out. I'm gonna hold down the on button. and it just goes out, yeah. Unplugged again. Okay, I've undone the ribbon cable and also this here, which I'm not sure what that does. 
Let's unplug this thing here as well. Right, we have that bit free now. Let's look at what we have here. So, what is what? Looks like we have a huge heat sink up here. I can't see any signs of water damage. On the bottom anyway. Uh, that, that all looks fine. I think what we need to do is I think we need to get down into it further to see what's going on with this input here. We need to get down to the power board, don't we? Right, I'm going to take some pictures of where these connections go because we have grey, grey and black. And uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to undo anything, undo everything. They've got like this gloopy glue on each of them, but hopefully they will still pull out. Right, so with this one here, it does only go up to 720p, so that's not ideal. But at the same time, at least it is still high definition. And I think the fact it has the speakers built in, it's nice. And the fact that you don't have to install it on a ceiling or far away from the wall. I really like that idea. Now right, let's get this board out. So this bit is really very uneventful. There's so many screws to undo and there's the top board, the side board to come out and then there's a metal plate to come out. And then after all of those are out, I can finally get to the power board. So I'm just gonna kind of show you a few bits that are relevant, but the most of this now will just be fast forwarded through until we get the power board out. Right, so this is the power supply here. So this is really what I wanna be working on. Oh, I can see an output here. There's a little plug and it says output 15 volts, 18 amps, I think it says. And I presume it's on this one here. Really, I need to get the power supply fully out, I think. Or do I? Do I? Maybe not. Maybe if I can measure 15 volts, then I don't have to. So now we've got two connections here, so there's probably another plug somewhere on here as well. Oh no, we've got one, two, three, four. Yeah, four to that one, four to that one. Maybe uh, maybe the other side of it is outputting different voltage. Yeah, maybe I should check voltage on these two here and see what's going on. So I'm going to plug in the power, but I'm going to keep my hands well away from here, because obviously we've got 240 volts going in here, which is easily enough to kill you. Okay, so we've got power going into this now, so I want to keep well away from there. And we're going to go to volts DC. Let's have a little probe around here and see what's happening. Well, unless it needs a signal to turn these on, as far as I can see, there's no voltage on these ones here. But maybe they only turn on when, for example, they get a signal to power on the uh, power supply. Let's have a little look in here. Right, as far as I can see, there's nothing, there's nothing happening on there. So there's no power getting into the boards. But saying that, occasionally the red light came on, didn't it? So if the red light came on, there must be power going through here. So maybe this only turns on when it's told to turn on. I'm gonna unplug it and strip it down further. Is it going to come out? Yes, 
I got it out. Right, excellent. Let's have a closer look at this power supply. Okay, now first things first, let's see what charge we have in these massive capacitors. So this huge one is gonna be, I presume, these two bits here, here and here. So put this to DC. Hopefully it will be empty. 13 volts, that's fine. Right, so those ones there, and we have a bank of three here. And one here as well. These might be low voltage, I'm not sure. Let's just check them out. Fine. Fine. Fine and fine, okay. One, two, three. I believe that this is safe to work on. So I am just going to short out this capacitor here. There we go. Tiny, 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 tiny little spark. And there we go, nothing there now. So I'm using my hand like this, so if there was any high voltage, it won't make me grab it. There we go, I'm happy now that that is safe to work on. So what have we got here? This is where I'm gonna massively struggle. Let's zoom in a little bit. So we have the input here, yeah? This is where the, uh, this is joined to the, uh, the earth coming in, and then we have the live and neutral. It looks like it goes through this here. So is this some kind of fuse? Looks like it says F1. We know, because it's uh, a power supply, that it will be going through a bridge rectifier, which must be this one here. And this will have four contacts on it two for the AC and two for the DC. So I suppose what we need to do first of all is, let's see if it's gonna be coming up on this circuit here. So we'll put power into it, and then I'm thinking the middle two is gonna be AC, and then these outer two will be DC. So then we, we know whether the circuit's okay from here back to here. So if it's, uh, if it's not, if we're not getting anything out of this, then uh, it could be a problem with this or something here. But if we're getting DC out of this, then the problem could be up here. It might be nothing to do with this power supply because maybe something on the board needs to tell this to turn on. Ah, look what I've just found here. Look what I've just seen here. I wonder was that me now? This is the output five volts, look at that. Chances are though, that is gonna be me now when I was yanking it out. Let's see if we've got any continuity. That's annoying now that I found that because I'm thinking now, is that, uh, have I done that or not? Yeah, there's nothing there. But that looks kind of fresh though, doesn't it? And why would that happen? Unless from the manufacturer it was screwed down, but I think it's unlikely. Let's strip it back. Actually, I might as well fix it properly. Let's get a little heat shrink. Okay, so that's repaired now. I'm not gonna put it all back together because that to me looked kind of fresh. So I'm still gonna keep working on the power supply for a moment. What I'm gonna do is put voltage into it and then see what we have at the bridge rectifier. So I'm gonna be using my fluke meter for this because I just have a little bit more faith in it if I was ever to have a problem that this will be a better meter than the one that I normally use. So I'm gonna plug it in now. I'm keeping my hands well away from everything. There's uh, nothing that can short down over here. Right, let's go. Right, so we're gonna have 240 AC volts going into this now. Okay, so I'm gonna go on the inner two pins. Two 
240 volts AC. I've seen that there. Now I'm going to go to DC. This is going to be slightly easier to measure. And I'm going to go onto the two outer pins. There we go. So that was 300 and something volts, wasn't it? So we know that that side of the power supply is okay. Let's check this capacitor here. There you go, 326 volts. So 100%, that's, uh, that capacitor is definitely getting voltage. Let's have a look here. We know that the outer one is ground. Let's see if we're getting anything on these pins. No, no. Yes, we are, we're getting five volts there. So now let's go on these pins here. Nothing and nothing. So do you know what I think? I think that this is like the PlayStation 4 power supply. You've always got five volts on here to allow it to turn on, but then when you turn it on, some of these other pins much must bridge and then we're gonna get the output here. The problem is I don't know what pins you would have to bridge here in order to get the, uh, the output there. I think this power supply is okay. See, initially I would think it could be a problem with the on and off switch, but the, the, the problem is the, the red light's not there all the time. It'd be different if the red light was there all the time, but it's disappearing when we try to press something. So that's what makes me think there's some sort of short or something somewhere. And if it was a problem with the lamp, you would still see it turn on and whir up and stuff. So there's definitely a problem with the startup of it. Well, because we did find a break in the wire, I am just gonna quickly put it back together, just roughly, just everything's loose, just to see if the red light stays on or goes out or a green light comes on or anything. What's interesting is I've got a speaker wire here and look, there's something big here. So I think it's got two speakers at the front and I think this is a subwoofer down at the bottom here. So let me get the rest of this together and then uh, I'll start filming as I'm about to turn it on. Okay, so I've got it roughly back together. I hope it doesn't go bang because obviously some of the balls are just balancing quite close to each other. Right, so I've plugged it in now. Uh, no red lights on here. So I presume that's a bad thing. I'm just gonna see what the on and off is. What is here? Okay, so I have got a red light on in here, but you can't see it through here because the lid's moved. Oh my God, the fan's there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The fan's there. Amazing. Right, okay. Let me uh, turn it off. I can see a light. I can see a light. Oh my, my. Let me get another video camera. I have never had dual filming, two cameras. Look at this. Look, 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 look. Vince has moved up in the world. Two camera angles and look at that, a light. Oh my, right, let's turn this off, hold on. Back to the other camera up there. Let's turn this off. Just gonna hold down that button. How'd you turn it off? I'm holding it down now. Is it gonna turn off? There we go. Wow, so hold on now. Maybe it wasn't me that ripped that wire or maybe the very fact of disconnecting everything, I've somehow reset something. Could it be, for example, because I've removed one of these cables here, that there's a certain part now that is not grounded and that's why it's working? Who knows, but let's get it back together and then we'll see if it's still working when it's back together. Unbelievable. Now this is gonna take me quite a bit of time to work out every single screw where it goes and all that. It's gonna be very boring to watch. So I'm just gonna do this with the camera off and then when it's fully back together, I'll give it a quick wipe over because there's a lot of dust, for example, in these bits in here. It's covered in, that, covered in dust down here. If I put my finger in here, it's all there. Uh, you can see there, the dust there. Uh, I'll give it all a wipe over and then I'll turn on the camera and we'll see when it's back together whether or not it still lights up. I might have to do fault, further fault finding on this, who knows. Now this is why it's important to take pictures or notes because if you have a look here, both these connectors fit into each other and when you first of all take them off, you think it's obvious which way they go in but then as you start to mess around with things, wires get swapped over and stuff but now I can just refer back to here and although these do both fit into each other, I now know that this is the right hand side and this is the left hand side here. 
So now we have all this part screwed in back together and cable tied where it was originally cable tied. So now what I need to do is put the bottom cover on, put this on, put the screws in, little rubber feet in and then just give it a clean and then we can test it. Back cover's on, let's plug it in. Let's see if it's gonna work. No light on there at the moment. I reckon there's still something rattling inside. Right, here we go. The fans are on. There we go, you can see my uh, hands lighting up. Fantastic, right, let's get this set up. I'm gonna learn how to use it and then we'll finish up the video. In fact, I can see it says Philips on my wall. Ah, oh, amazing, I'll show you all that when we get it set up. Okay, so it's all cleaned up now and I've now got a display but it's not working. It's just wearing rounds here for, well, I've left it 15 minutes and it's still doing it. I've tried doing the long press on here to reset it, the long press on the on and off button, and then it does turn itself off, but when I go to turn it on, it just comes up with this again. So do you know what I'm thinking now? I'm thinking that this is the original fault with the projector, and then whoever looked at it damaged that cable in taking it apart or putting it back together, and so then it became no power and I fixed the no power side of it, but this is the original fault. So what I'm gonna to try to do is, I'm gonna to try to update the firmware on it. The problem is you need to go into some sort of maintenance mode, and I can't get past this boot screen, but there's nothing else I can do. So uh, if it's a software related thing, I'm not gonna be able to fix that, am I? So uh, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna download the firmware. Hopefully it's gonna be online, put it on a USB stick. Plenty of USB ports on here and then uh, you know, put it into the one in the front here somewhere. And then, uh, yeah, see if it does anything different. Bit of a shame. So I've gone onto the Philips website here. I found my particular projector, and then I've gone down here, and it says software upgrade, download file. You've got to accept it, and then you've got an option here to download it. So that's what I've done, and I've put it on the little USB stick. It's formatted to FAT32. Let's give it a go, see if it's gonna do anything. I'm not hopeful though. So here goes, it's off at the moment. Let's plug in this USB into here. And now let's turn it on by holding it down for five seconds or so. And see if it does anything, anything different. The problem is it says in the instructions to uh, hold it on and then go into, where is it now? Yeah, it says look, long press, on and off button after the initial screen the main menu appears but the problem is I'm not getting past this initial screen so I actually don't know how I can force the update onto it but anyway I'm gonna leave it be if that screen changes obviously I'll pick up the camera and start filming again but I can't get past that screen to actually get it to look at the USB stick right it's still wearing away doing nothing but if you have a look here it's suggesting that you could do it from an SD card rather than a USB stick and it's saying that uh, after a short while it should ask if you want to install the update, accept it. So I'm gonna to try to find an SD card that's empty and then uh, put the information on there. Let's try that, we might have more luck. Okay, now let's try this, see if this makes any difference. Right, so I'm hoping this time it might do something after a couple of minutes. So I'll start filming again and let you know the outcome. And predictably, it's doing exactly the same as it did before. So the problem with this is, is that it can't get to the menu to do any updating or anything like that. So I think, I've no, I, think I know what's happened here. This is one of those eBay ones where obviously you don't know the history of it. And this is why it's a constant battle. So the original fault on this, I think, was that it was dropped because, I know it's dark and you can't see now, but we had damage on this left hand side here. So I think it was dropped and probably one of the BGA chips or something has got a cracked solder ball. In which case it can't find the software to load anything up. Then of course it goes into the fix it world off eBay or wherever it goes to and people try to fix it. And in trying to fix it, they've damaged that wire and it's ended up with no power. So I fixed a no power thinking I fixed a projector but I haven't fixed the original problem. Now, am I gonna take it any further? No, I stop right there. I did take it further. Right now I was feeling sorry for myself, sorry for all those times that I get this rubbish from eBay where it's just gone through many, many, many hands and then 
why am I any more experienced than anybody else? And then I think I've fixed something, but I haven't. And how many other people has this gone through before it's even got to me? So I actually ended up the video as a failure, apologising that uh, I couldn't get it to work, but I did my best. Anyway, I kept thinking about was there a way that I could force the update, like a kind of maintenance mode, like a uh, when you go onto an Xbox and you have to hold down the sync button and the eject button and the power button for so many beeps, where you can then load up the software from there. And amazingly, I found a button combination that worked. Now, I obviously didn't know the button combination. So what I did is, the good old fashioned thing I used to do back in the day with the Spectrum 48K when I wanted to hack into a game, I would press all the keys at once and then it would throw a wobbly and let you get into the code of the game in which you could change things like colors and words and stuff like that. And that's what I did here. I pressed all the buttons and amazingly, it came up with this thing on the wall now. Annoyingly, it's really late at night, kids are in bed, wife's in bed, and I'm in the main room. And I live in a house with uh, very thin plasterboard ceilings and chipboard floors, and the noise just travels through like it's made out of cardboard. So I can't actually have any audio on this bit. Oh my God, I have to keep my voice down because everybody's in bed. What I did was I turned it off and then I held every button down because I was wondering if there was a combination. So I used these four fingers and my other four fingers and I went to turn it on but it wouldn't turn on. Then I released these and then it went to turn on. Then I held them all down again and it went to go on, then it went off and then it came on and it came up with this here. So obviously there must be some sort of special button press that you do in order to get it come on. So what I'm gonna do now is I've actually got the SD card and the USB stick in, because I just tried putting both of them in. So I'm gonna go down to install from USB stick or SD card. So let's go down. Yes, and it's moved down. And now I'm going to press OK. Right, no valid firmware was found. Please download the latest firmware. Well, I've done that already. Uh, device is going to reboot after a key is pressed. OK, well, let's just try that. Well, at least I know now that I might be able to get into that menu again. No, it's just going to do this rubbish again. Right, I'm going to mess around with this for a while. I might be, I've got my hopes up again. Oh my god. Yes! Okay, it's about 45 minutes later and amazingly this is all working. I can't believe that I managed to get it to work. So, I tried to do every single thing on that list there and nothing was making any difference. It wouldn't accept the firmware. I tried to reset it, nothing was happening. Then I went to turn it, forcibly turn it off because after you try to do the firmware, it boots automatically. And just as I was trying to turn it off because it takes about a good six or seven seconds to turn this thing off, I suddenly seen a list of languages and I thought, what? Because that looks like the startups, you know, the uh, when you first fall by it. And I did reset this to factory settings, turned it back on, and I had the menu to choose my language. And then I just had to go through, set the date and the time. And ever since then, it's been working fine. And now I can turn it on and off, and it works just fine. Let me just do a quick one here. So if I turn it off there, you will see it goes off. But that's only in standby now, you see, because that light's still on. But then if I turn it back on, it will boot back up again and it's the same if I do a full reset by holding it down because I've now moved rooms as well. There you go and you can see now Philips is coming up here. So it's really hard for me to show you this because I haven't got a wall clear to actually show you <laughs> and also you're supposed to have this a minimum of 50 centimeters away and at this moment in time I'm about 35 centimeters away from the wall so it's not quite as clear as it should be but it still looks really, really nice. So I've got my PlayStation 5 plugged into it there. You can see the little PS5 light mod. There you go. And uh, watch one of my other videos for that. And now if I go to up here to HDMI 2, which I've got it plugged into, and press OK, it's going to go over to the PlayStation. There we go. Right, let me try to uh, get this uh, back a little bit. And also the sound's lovely. Annoyingly, though, I haven't got the remote control for it. So to adjust the sound, I need to go into home, 
and then go into sound settings and volumes. That's a bit of a nightmare, so I think I am going to see if I can get uh, the either original remote control or an aftermarket remote control for this so I can adjust the sound. But the sound does sound nice and loud, so this is kind of like a sound bar and a projector all in one. So it's really, really nice. I mean, look at this up here. Let me get my uh, camera back a little bit. Here we go. Now what I've done is I've got the lights over here off but the lights behind me on. But check this out. You can see the adaptive triggers there. It looks lovely. And I know it's only 720p and I suppose obviously it's going to look better on a game like this because this is like a cartoon game. But uh, it's uh, maybe if you were to watch something more realistic it wouldn't look as good. But I don't know, it looks pretty nice to me. I think this is just going to transform movie night. Now obviously this can go from 50 inch to 100 inch. This wouldn't be 50 inch right now because I've got it too close. But I love the idea of the short throw projector where you don't have to have it mounted on a ceiling far away. I like, I like the idea of that. This is quite clever when you're going through here, you can actually feel, it feels like the sound's hitting against you through the haptic feedback of the controller. So there we have it, so, so, so happy with this. And as far as the fix was concerned, well, it was a bit of a strange one really, wasn't it? Because uh, I didn't know the full story of it when you, which is often the case when you buy from eBay. But uh, the bottom end result is that it is now working and I think for £100 that this is actually quite a good monitor for that price. So uh, yeah, very, 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 very happy with it. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more China Fix videos. Take care everyone.